to call to order the Board of Supervisors meeting for the Town of Sevastopol on Monday, August 21st, 2023 at 7 p.m. And doing so, would we like to have the Pledge of Allegiance? Yeah. We're all waiting. Well, all right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Amy, how about the roll call to establish a quorum? Supervisor Jeannie Vogel. Here. Supervisor <laughs> Derek Daniel. Here. Supervisor Linda Way. Here. Supervisor Mark Hain. Here. Chairman Dan Walpole. Here. All right, good to go. Meet and greet. Well, tonight is going to go very quickly. <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourself, sir? Yes. Uh, yeah, good evening. I'm Hugh Zell. I'm the District 14 uh, County Board Supervisor, which represents uh, the eastern half of the town of Sebastopol and Ward 1 of the town of Sturgeon Bay. All right. Nice. Thank you for joining us this evening, sir. Gentlemen, would you care to introduce yourself, or would you prefer to be anonymous tonight? Derek? Oh. Uh, Derek Denise, uh, could you rewrote? All right. And behind the camera is... Who's now in front? Larry's Jack and Glenn's Rep. All right, good to go. Welcome. Anyone here from the public wishing to speak? Hearing none, we will move on. How about adopting the agenda? It was properly noticed, was it not, Amy? The agenda was properly noticed. So then we would need a motion to adopt. I'll make a motion to adopt the agenda. Motion by Derek, second by? Second. Second by Mark. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. Approval of the minutes. Board of Supervisors meeting from July 17th. I'll make a motion to approve the um, minutes for the July 17th meeting. All right. Motion by Jeannie. Second by? Second. Second by Mark. To approve the minutes. Board of Supervisors meeting July 17th. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carried. Good. We're moving. All right, first item here on the agenda is let's try and set a time for the budget work session. This always presents an interesting oh challenge God. because some of it's up to Amy in terms of when she gets all of her information. So, Amy, do you have a, just a date to suggest or a couple of dates and we'll kind of work from that? Um, let's look at um, that first or that second week in October. The night, the week of the ninth. Uh, the week of the ninth, yes. Okay, and huh. you think you'll have most of the stuff you need by then? I do believe I'll have most of the things by then. Okay. Um, so, either the ninth or the tenth, if that's available. How does any and all Monday's fine with me? But I don't know if it's good with anybody else. All right, I got one. Yes. Monday would be better. Yeah. It's okay. Two, three. Sure, why not? Okay. What time? Um, we started it early our last yeah. year. 6 or 6.30 was it, or is it? I think we started, we used to normally do it at 6, I think we moved it up, or was it 7 and we moved it to 6? We had it, we usually had it like 5.30, but we moved it to 6 because Linda had a class uh, in Appleton that day. Oh, that's right. Jeez so, Louise. Okay. I'd prefer 6. <laughs> 6 or 6.30 is something. I'd prefer oh, six. I got budget work. Earliest six would be my preference. My calendar last year, six thirty. So does that work for everybody? Mm -hmm. So we're meeting at six thirty. Okay. So Monday, it's October ninth. October ninth, six thirty. I see the school is having their budget hearing on the twenty fourth. So. Okay. Good. That one's six thirty. Thanks, Amy. Yeah. All right. Road construction update. Um, so here's where we're at. Uh, the county has completed Clark Lake from Mathie to Highway 42, and they have completed Har Harder Hill. They do have some shouldering work that needs to be completed yet on both of those projects. One of them's almost all done. The other one was just waiting to be finished. Um, I took a look. Uh, I took a look. Excuse me. I had the county give me a running tally for where they're at with the roads that they have done, and. Including the shouldering, we should come in around $82,000 for the two that they have completed against bids of 107. 
Ooh. So as we kind of projected, you know, they save some money and hopefully if work continues along those same lines, we'll have excess under our budget and I'll put it towards uh, doing some, uh, uh, what's the word I want? Repairs? Sorry. Maintenance? No, not maintenance. Uh, Chips tree chip, cutting? Oh, <laughs> crack filling. Crack filling, thank you. We're going through every word in my book. So we would go through some crack filling. Um, the 21st is the start day on West Whitefish Bay, Whitefish Bay Road and done. So just as a refresher, they're going to pulverize that. So they will pulverize that and then they will come back and they will do uh, the black topping, which will go down over those culverts that we've replaced. And um, they will be in the neighborhood because they're working on Clark Lake Road now. So, so the 21st is the date? They're going to start on the 21st. Today, like like tomorrow? Tomorrow, like today? He said this week, the 21st, he had it scheduled. I did not go there to see if they did it or not. So unless there was a weather-related issue, uh, he said they had them scheduled because they get the pulverizer, I believe, from Northeast Asphalt. So I think we're going to be below. I'm pretty comfortable with that. So we'll do some crack filling if that works out. He'll give me billing as we move ahead. And I think that'll, we'll catch up with, uh, we'll, we'll spend what we put in the budget. Okay, any questions? All right. Are they running later than usual? I want to say that normally projects were done before the end of August. No, last year, last year, year before, they were in September. Huh? It okay. just depends on where their equipment is so they don't have to move it as much. So he, he told me he was going to do it right after they started on Clark Lake because they have the, uh, door Century 100 bike ride, and so they want to get Clark Lake with one layer on it, so there's not issues with the bikers. So, uh, okay. so I wanted to try and give you a little bit of an update on where we stood with uh, <clears throat> with the citations on the nuisance ordinance violations and the short-term rental update. And, that really has turned into a project because, I don't know if you knew this or not, but Amy Sullivan uh, did a 180 and broke her elbow. Mm. So she was uh, having, obviously, a problem typing, to say the least. So as a result of it, a lot of the things that we thought were going to be done uh, really slipped. Um, but this afternoon, we got most of the stuff that we were looking for, and we had a conference call with Tyler Bluff, who uh, Amy asked to, to fill us in on a process for citations. And I think we're up to speed on what we need to do there. <clears throat> and basically what will happen is if there's an issue, <coughs> Amy will fill out the citation, which is a three-part document. Attorney Amy. No. This Amy Sol uh, excuse me. Amy Flock will okay. fill out the citation paperwork. Right. One sheet. Uh, goes to the clerk of courts, one goes to our attorney, and one goes to the uh, person that's being fined. She will then give that, in, that document to our attorneys who will inform the court and fill in the date for a court appearance date. And there's selected dates that are predetermined all the way through the end of the year for that. You're probably a lot more familiar than I am with it, Linda. And um, then they will take care of the notification the defendant or to the person that's being fined. And then depending on the, the position, uh, they will either plead guilty, pay the fine or whatever, and the rest of the work will fall with the attorney. If it ends up going to a trial, they'll have a meeting with the judge and you know all kinds of things that at that point won't necessarily involve us. The other item we were concerned about was <clears throat> what's the process for issuing, issuing a second citation or a third. Um, and basically, we have the ability to do that at any time in the process if, if we so choose to do so. Um, and I'll give you an example with uh, the Brandt property. Unfortunately, the Brandt property is one of the properties that slipped through the cracks and the actual notification to them and the filing with the courts it either happened today or will happen tomorrow. So it slipped past where we expected it to be. Um, <clears throat> and when I was out there physically a week or so back, nothing more was removed. In fact, I think something was added. 
so uh, the initial uh, fine is five hundred dollars. Um, they'll send that out. They'll give them a court date. In this case, the brand court date would be on September 11th, correct? Correct, at 3.30. Right, at 3.30. So <clears throat> it's up to us. We can issue another citation, and because we have in the ordinance the ability to do that in $500 increments, each day can be a separate violation, and we can decide what we would like to find. So in other words, if... If it's been 10 days, we could choose to do 10 days, we could choose to do three days, we could choose to do one day. So you, you're welcome to give me some input on what you think you'd like to do. But there are a couple of what I'll say is recalcitrant, recalcitrant people with respect to addressing these issues. So from my perspective, I think we need to shake them up a little bit with something more than a single $500 fine if they don't react. That's just my thought. So you said we could, sorry, Mr. Chairman. No, that's right. um, um, so you said we, we have the, we can we do can repeat. $500 a, a day. We could do $500 a day. That's the way our ordinance reads. Um, and, and Tyler basically said, this is like parking tickets. You know, just because you got one parking ticket today doesn't mean you can't get another one tomorrow, whether you mm -hmm. dispute it or not. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> in the case of Brant's, they've been reluctant to do anything. I mean, and they've been warned, whatever. So I, I think there's, an, uh, there's probably a situation here where we need to stir them into action. Um, but let, let's hold that for just a minute. I'll try and just see if there's a couple other things here. Um, Oh, we do not need to do more board action with these because we've already taken care of that at our last meeting. And, oh, Fortners, the Forters, the Forters, was one of the other ones that we believed were, uh, well, the paperwork had been initiated, that it was not. And that's going out in, either went out today or tomorrow. And this is the Glidden Drive short-term rental. So... That should have been addressed earlier. Unfortunately, it wasn't. And the Rushi property, they're working on it today. Uh, I have a draft of the letter, but I need to fill in some details for Amy Sullivan. Um, so those are the three active ones at this point in time. So going back to the discussion, you know, share your thoughts on how we should deal with people that uh, mm -hmm. ignore what you think we should do or not do. <clears throat> so. Kim, um, I don't recall if we updated our citation ordinance. I know we have one on the books from like a 20, long time ago. It's about eight or ten years old. Okay, and it did have a new uh, schedule of uh, deposits then too, I would imagine, it, and penalties. It was $500. To conform with the... Not statutes, but the court, the court's <clears throat> filing schedule, because they have so much for court costs, so much for oh, yeah, I right, don't, yeah, all those different categories. Well, the ordinance itself, attorneys' um, fees. The ordinance itself that we're talking about for regulating um, this citation issuance, nuisance. the nuisance ordinance actually has. The, oh, the, citation the citations oh, built okay. in it. So the first offense right. is $500. The second offense can be, I believe, $1,000 or $1,500. So um, it is up to the board how they would like to treat it. So I guess that's what Dan is asking. Right. Um, if you want to continue with that $500 as a secondary one, or if you want to give it a week, and then um, go to that second tier of um, citations? Correct. So, I mean, given the fact that, and we'll talk specifically about grants, but um, they have chosen over, God, I can't even tell you how long, to do nothing. 
I would give them a very short time frame to react. And if they haven't done something within a week or 10 days of getting the citation, um, I would think we would go and significantly cite them to try and get them into action. So, but that's mine. You know, what do you think? And the same thing would apply if we have no reactions with Wushu. And that's, that's been another one that's been out there for, what, 10, 10 years, maybe more? Laddie, when did we tape that house? That was... Oh, gosh. Um, well, I at least it up, but it I'm saying like 10 years ago. 20, I'd say 2015 or something. No, like I mean Leo. Leo was involved right, yeah, in it at the time, and and right. was it uh, Tim Herlash that was the fire chief? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it, it's got to be close to 10 years. So. Yeah, I'm looking at the nuisance ordinance, and correct, it does have the abatement and the right uh, issuance of citation and the penalties and all that in there as well. So. So do I hear any suggestions? Otherwise, you want to leave it to Amy and myself? I'm all for proceeding on the, the properties that we identified. Right. Um, one is a total disaster. I mean, and there doesn't seem any improvement despite the conditions that were set, the conditional use. Yeah, I, I think proceeding is right. It's just, I think he's asking for direction on the fine. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not backing off of anything no. we've agreed to do. It's just fines. You know. Uh, fine structure. I just think, if somebody comes forward and said, why do we find him X? Then the answer is either we agreed as a board that the next violation will be 1,000 and the one after that's 1,500, or we're going to stay with 500. And there, or there's going to be some degree of frequency that you think is reasonable and normal. <clears throat> you know, I would say, you know, with those people that we've identified for a long time, I'd say we give them a very short window. If it's a if it's a a new issue, we're a little more gracious in our timing. Um, but in the case of people that just basically throw any documentation in the trash and ignore us, I think we should come back and let them know we're serious. Are we sending these as certified mail so they have to sign for them? Right. Yeah. In, in the case of the citations, it'll come from our attorney through certified mail. We could have it served, but they said it's 60 to $70 to have it served. I mean, spend the five for certified mail and leave it at that. So. Well, if, they're, if you're going to get someone's attention, I guess the numbers will go up. So. Yeah. I, I'm fine with you with you using your discretion as okay. chairman. Um, Any other comments? The ordinance says each and every day could be considered so a separate, separate violation. Yeah. Right. Hundred dollars a day. For me? Hundred dollars a day after the notice has been served. After the initial notice? I mean we got I, we obviously have to give them time to react. Oh yeah. Right. Right. I would say for a, a new situation, we give them 30 days. Yeah, that's a new one. But a new, these, yeah, these but a, one that's an ongoing. And there's really yep. only two or three of them. I think the reaction time has to be quicker because they're not. This remember that new. they've been chased by the county for years mm -hmm. and have not responded to the county. Mm -hmm. So you know, this is now we're spending our dime to do the job that the county didn't get accomplished. So. We have a couple more coming up too, I think. There may be. There's one in uh, just south of the mill. Sweet Willies, have you seen that? I think the that just fell down. I think that blew down, down with the storm. last storm on that last Friday. Yeah. He hasn't cut the grass there all summer. Yeah. Very clean it up. And that's, we can take care of that one. We've had some success just sending some people letters asking them to do it before we. Well, that's like the entrance to our town. I, mean, um, I said that last night too. I, the highway right there. I don't know. What he does not have a liquor license. Has have you heard anything from him, Amy? No. I don't, I don't know if he's for health if something happened or don't know. All right. Well, here I until somebody says differently. I'll give somebody a ten day window that's 
that somebody that's been on our list, and if it's a new person, we'll give them a 30-day window, after which we'll cite them. And um, I think we should escalate with our ordinance. So the next fine is $1,000, and if it goes again, we do 1500 And if we have to continue after that, which I, God, I hope that's not the case, we'll add $500 each time. I mean, should we start doing like the city does? If you don't cut your lawn, they hire someone for $60 an hour to come and cut your lawn. You know what I mean? Like, also, we have a cleaning crew come in and a dumpster and start cleaning your yard for you. I mean, put, should we put that out there? We're going to have to start doing that. Well, with Amy and I, we focused on a few people. And so far, uh, a reasonably worded letter saying, please do that or mm -hmm. we will. Um, we've had fair, fairly good response. Now, we have one that uh, just down the road that uh, came in and cleaned up partially, but still has mm -hmm. some things left. So we're sending them a letter saying thank you for addressing this, but we need you to finish. Keep sharing on, yeah. Carrying on, and then keep up. Yep. So I think that's the case. I think if we're going to do it otherwise, we probably have to go back to the attorney and come up with some kind of defined process for that. I mean, I'm not adverse to that at all because some of these We people, might have to think about getting a nuisance committee again. I know. You um, know what I mean? To actually sit down and put some words together and figure something out if it, if it doesn't take care of itself on these letters. I'll, I'll tell you what, I, I agree with you because, I mean, there's a couple so far, like I said, they've been good. But I'll ask the attorney to, to give me their opinion officially on what we, how we can handle that. Um, Steve Estes, property management, has mm -hmm. taken care of the corner over mm -hmm. there. The gal that owns that, by the way, they said has passed away. Did you oh, know really? that? Oh, yeah. that? Somebody stopped here at the town and said they tried to contact Jerry? her. And, Jerry, they said it passed away. Now, I don't have any well, information on it, but that's what they mm -hmm. said. So, okay, enough on, uh, on that topic. Um, fire contract, as you know, it's up for renewal uh, January 1. I have met with Josh and Leash out at the city and the fire chief, and we've established some guidelines or or ground rules or options, whatever combination you'd like to use. And I anticipate in September that we will get back together and have some options to discuss at our next board meeting. At least that's my hope. I think that'll happen. So not much else I can share with you at this point. Mr. Chairman, would, yes. would it be a, a long-term contract like we had before then? You know, there, three years. It, or yeah, then there might it, we might consider five, but I think three is as far as we're going to go. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of where I think it's tracking. <clears throat> and I did well. I'll share this with you later. We'll leave that go. Um, Glidden Drive Association. <clears throat> Some of you have been approached over the years about the lanes. Some that belong to us. Some that belong to. We don't know who. Some of us belong to the Glidden Drive Association. And they formally requested on the 31st of July that we survey the lots or the lanes. Um, they've done some of this themselves to see which lanes are theirs, if there are any deed restrictions, if they're private or public. And they're asking us to consider doing the rest of them. <clears throat> and there's a list of them that that are out there. <coughs> They're also asking us if we want to define anything like parking, um, fires, <coughs> walks, etc. cetera. Um, I understand that to some degree, but I also don't want to, don't want to put any restrictions in that require us to become a police department. Um, they have some lanes that they surveyed that there were issues with vehicle access, so they placed a couple large boulders on one or two lanes to prevent a car, but still leave people a place to park or walk in or take a wagon or whatever you might want. So uh, they're asking us to set some rules. And I'm very reluctant to do that other than maybe motor vehicles, but I leave that for our discussion. Um, <clears throat> I would guess just from what I've heard, each one of the lanes that we do would probably cost us 800 to to $1,000 for the survey. 
they would be marked and of course Glidden would know uh, the property lines and where what the access is. They're also talking about some signage. If you've been on Glidden, they use a white sign with black lettering to mark the access points. There's a lot of six foot wide access points going down there and then there's a number of 50 and 60 foot wide access points. The larger ones are mostly on the water side, although there are one or two that are on the road side. And a number of them are treated as driveways, like Goldenrod Lane is actually a driveway, it's a, but it's been turned into a driveway for a residence on the north and south side. And then Deer Path on the road side is <coughs> a similar situation. Three people use the lane as an access point for their homes. So uh, I get calls, Amy gets calls, Linda's gotten calls constantly on these lanes or Schmack Road, which runs behind it. And <clears throat> inevitably we are with land use services trying to answer the question, or we're with our attorney, or we're with digging through deeds or whatever to try and find out the answer to the question. And uh, it, it, it's frankly enough to drive you a little crazy. Um, so although I'm not gung-ho about spending a lot of money to do it, I probably wouldn't be adverse to supporting the surveys on the ones that are ours so we have some answer. Uh, I recently had an individual who called and wanted us to cut trees down that were on Schmock Lane that were leaning into his property. And again, back through the attorney and Holly and everything else, we finally determined that Although Smock Lane is a platted road, it was never accepted by the town and it's basically treated as no man's land. So we didn't have to do anything with it and I told the owner that he was free to cut the trees. So uh, I think he would have preferred that we cut the trees, but <clears throat> so I think maybe doing the surveys and trying to get as much legal description and lot lines and whatever is probably a decent investment of time given how much we've spent over the years, but I'll open it up for your thoughts. Oh, and this document that you have that Laddie prepared mm -hmm. that has been used to a large degree by the county. When you talk to <coughs> when you talk to Holly Hansen, they use this <laughs> as much as anything as a uh, the truth about the lanes. So at any rate, your thoughts? Well, um I would, I would favor clearing this up once and for all. I mean, this has been going on as long as I can remember. Um, who owns what and who has access to what. My suggestion would be to um, hire a title, insur a title company, determine which lanes or roads are do belong to the town once and for all, have them surveyed. Um, as far as signage, um, we don't indicate public access on any of our other roads that lead to the beach or to the lake or the bay. Um, Shack Road is a perfect example. And just sign it like we would any other road, mm -hmm. or Wood Lane or whatever. Um, the, the association had listed uh, six lanes. I came up with at least 11 lanes. So again, I think a title company or attorney do the research once and for all. This is what the town owns. Put up our sign and just leave it at that. I don't know why we would have to put access, you know, public access here or bikes only or no motorized vehicles. We don't do that with our other roads. No, I'm just thinking the signs that are there are on Glidden's right now, right? Yeah, well, I'm not necessarily in favor of it either, um, but there has been some issues with vehicles, and mostly that was driven by uh, construction vehicles during the repair the beach routine, and I think there's probably been an ATV or two, but they were never going to catch them. Do you have any other feelings on that, Hugh? Uh, yes. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I think uh, getting it clarified as far as the lanes that the, the town owns is a good investment. I know that the 
the GDA are doing the lanes that are private that they own and are doing their own surveys. They're continuing that process and investing in that themselves. With respect to signage, um, there are existing signs, I believe, on Goldenrod and, and White Pine. And I would, I would urge the town to continue those, especially what, where it relates to how wide the town's property is. I know the county does that, say at, uh, at Lily Bay Dock, you know, where you have concerns about repairing rights as far as what's private property and what is, you know, county property. You have that, at, you have that there at, at, uh, at Lily Bay or Westers, as it's for some of us old timers. Um, and I th think it's appropriate to do the, the same relative to where the, uh, the, the town's property extends and where they have the, you know, where you allow the ability for them to get access down uh, to the beach. There has also been numerous instances of, of fires uh, in those public access areas. And as you know, we've talked about, you know, uh, of uh, fires on the beach as part of, you know, re-looking at an ordinance. And I'm assuming on any town property, you don't want to have fires that are not, you know, consistent with an ordinance. Um, so I think even, you know, that sort of, um, that sort of thing might also be uh, under consideration relative to just public safety, um, since that is basically, you know, people utilizing town property to do that. And, and I think the town would be mindful of minimizing their liability in that regard. We would, yeah, uh, I was thinking out loud here, I, I think we'd probably have to have an ordinance behind it if we labeled it no fires on the beach, because otherwise the sheriff would not enforce it. I'm not even sure he would anyhow, but the fire chief could. Biggest problem is if we put it up there, it is the enforcement of, you know, I mean, the expectation is, is that if it says that, then and it's town of Sebastopol that we're the ones, and I hate to put us in a position where we can't comply with what we do. Uh, yeah. The fires are also that fire is also a different challenge as well because <coughs> on the right. water side of the ordinary high water mark, you're now subject to state zone state zoning, and basically that's under the jurisdiction of the DNR, as opposed to on the the roadside, if you will, of the ordinary high water mark, yeah. then, that, then that becomes um, county ordinance domain. I, I think the DNR, I'm, I'm not positive of this, but the DNR has relinquished a lot of their authority to the county on some of that high water mark determinations. And I mean, we'd have to go back to land use, land use services yes. and ask what they've been delegated to do or not do. But in, in any case, we'd have to do a little more digging before we put up signage that we we'd have a tough time enforcing. Other than any fire that's out there, the fire department would respond to if you call them that's unattended. We discussed that at the GDA meeting, so. Could we do this one step at a time? Determine what we own and have oh, yeah, the property I mean, surveyed, well, and then um, get further input from the association. Sure. Others, that's Yeah, decided. I didn't think we were gonna do all of it tonight, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, I agree. Yeah. If we string this out for another eight or nine years, the next committee and board will be able to work on it. Uh, you know, no, I, I don't disagree. That would be. Any other thoughts? So, title search first. Yeah, the title search and, and survey. survey. Yeah. We could put that when we um, address our budget. Uh, calculate, okay, yeah. maximum of 11 lanes at 1,000. We'll include that in our budget. Yep. So it's, so it's still in question how many lanes the town actually owns. Okay, we can do that. So generally speaking, the rest of the board is thinking it's a worthwhile effort, I assume? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Like Linda said, let's put a fork in it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> you won't hear an argument from me. Mm. All right. We'll try and uh, work that if we can. Um, next item is Town Park Restroom Concession Stand. And this is just information for the board just to know where we're tracking. At some point in time, we got to come back together and talk about our capital equipment plan. 
and maybe September we'll, I'm still working that with Amy. But just as an FYI, we are going to make a 100% effort to either restore, remodel, destroy the restrooms and reconstruct them in some way, shape, or form. And it is a priority for us. I mean, the park has really been upgraded over time, and the restrooms, if you've had the privilege of using them, are have not. <laughs> have not. They are, they are a step away from a porta potty. Um, they have electricity and running water, but that's about it. So they need an upgrade, and, and they're, they're in tough shape. We're investigating two options. Um, we don't have any numbers, but one of them would be to build two smaller bathrooms, located one on the north side to address the pickleball tennis area, separate, separate and one on the south end to address it, so that <clears throat> the distance between both places uh, is a little more accommodating, because right now it's a hike depending on where you're coming from. We're also going to investigate, obviously, just a standalone new bathroom and envisioning it close to the current uh, concession stand, but out closer to the parking lot, a little bit to the north field um, in between the trees. We don't want to do any damage to the trees that are standing and in good shape. Um, and the beauty of this is uh, I called Henry Isaacson, who was the architect on this building, <coughs> asking Henry, if he could make a recommendation for an architect to use. And Henry, whose son is on the school board, his kids and grandkids went to Sebastopol schools, volunteered his time to, to do all of the work for us oh, nice. as an architect, which I, I couldn't thank him enough for doing. Um, I've worked with him before. They're, they're certainly extremely competent, and he's more than willing to take it on. And this will be a project that has to be bid, so, I mean, it's, it's not... Uh, you know, it, we have to go to that level of detail and anticipating, and this is just Henry off the top of his head, and what Jacksonport spent as well, it could be as a couple hundred thousand dollars. We do have a chunk of change in the capital budget, so we'll address that further, but, um, and, I, and I really hope that as soon as we get anything close to a plan and we can sit down with a couple people and get some ballpark numbers, uh, I will make an effort to see what we can do for grants. Uh, we are using the, what is it, $8,000, Amy? $8,500 that the destination Door County gave us? Just wait until my treasurer's report. Oh, excuse me. Just I was wait. way ahead of myself. <clears throat> okay, well, they're, so. They're giving, they're, oh. when John Jarsh was on WDOR, they were giving, I can't remember, one of the, is the town of Gibraltar got like 25000 some of they have different but criteria, their park, but it was a park thing, was for the park more. restoration and stuff. Yeah, uh, but, you know, and they're doing round. They're, they, can we do it another go at that with the destination? Uh, destination Door community County, I think, is fund. annual, right? The community investment. The fund. community investment fund is. Are you confusing or not confusing? But are you? Well, that was whatever the John Jarsh was. That was the community investment fund. I think, yeah. That you're referring to. But this was like the park, the parks and. If I did see something on the parks, I contacted the Community Investment Fund to see if that was something we could potentially use for the restrooms. And from the documentation that I pulled off the internet and tried to fill out, I think it's going to be an uphill struggle because it, it really has to be tourist related. Now, mm -hmm. granted, having a nice. They need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> you need to go to the bathroom. Hey, there's a lot of people who just stop in there on the way through to use the restrooms. Yeah. Well, it might be, quite a but. Bit. And you have to try and tie it back to overnight stays. So unless we can get some bums to spend the night in the restroom. We had, that's already happened. We had that a few years back. So I, I don't know if we classify them as a stay. It, it's, it's a little difficult. I can get together with them and talk further, but my initial gut feeling was it was a stretch. But there are other venues for us to get some matching funds. And you know, I'll pursue them as soon as we have an estimate on where this is going. Mm -hmm. So the hope would be... If we can get Henry and Jeff to give us some plans and we get some numbers, you know, maybe we can luck out and start something next spring, summer, you know, which would be ideal. So we'll see. So I have a call. Yes. So I went to the Wisconsin Towns Association Council meeting this past weekend in Stevens Point, and we talked extensively about the new budget bill and shared revenue and all oh, that. Yeah. There is three hundred million dollars available for public safety, EMS, parks, 
any consolidated services. There's an additional $3 million available to help you write your grant. So, you know, instead of, I think it's time that we maybe give a go at some of these funds at the state level. We always seem to be hesitant and we want to stick with either Raybrook or the Community Investment Fund or Destination Door County. I think it's time that Sevastopol started pursuing um, some of that. All they can do is tell us no. Exactly. <laughs> Gibraltar um, applied for something. It cost them $10,000 to write the grant. They were denied. I don't know why, but, um, and this was not a shared revenue thing. It was something else. But Did they... I think just put our foot in the water and, you know, test these. And, I mean, it would be really nice to get 200000 can, can we ask Bay Lake Regional Planning oh, yeah. to write the grant oh, to the, try to get some money? Right. Even Brett, yeah. they do that. The they, they do the they write grants. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the name? The mayor, the Dark County. Mm -hmm. Did they give you any specific fund? Because I get oh, these yeah, things in the mail in the droves. Uh, and well, you, you, I mean, I'm, you don't have to give it to me now. But the biggest problem I have is trying to find one that we qualify for. And I've been watching for the obvious one, which is. Uh, Shower Park Road, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but by the time you look at, you know, you go safety. You no, know, this one, no. It's like whatever. I don't know. But if you have any specific funds, or if we can go back to the WTA mm -hmm. representative and say, give me one that help. I can go. Right, help us. Yeah, okay. help us. The money is there. <clears throat> um, I don't so. think it's. I don't think we could apply quite yet. But I thought when you get under committee and commission reports, I'd just give that's a little great. recap. Um, what else I learned because it was very educational. Good. I mean, that's good. I mean, I know I've sent that a note here or there too about, the, you know, maybe these grants play, maybe they don't. You know, they're sometimes they're at such a level it's whatever. Do okay. you want me to make an inquiry? Oh, yeah. I think I think we should. I mean, I have absolutely no problem chasing that. If, if we can just define one that we believe is achievable. <clears throat> We're, quali we're qualified to, to do. Mm -hmm. um, next in your packet is the uh, assessed value. This is Wisconsin Department of Revenue statement of changes in equalized value by class and items. And <clears throat> I think we all are familiar with the fact on why we're doing a reval because we've slipped so far out of sync with our actual values. And if you look at the report, we are, according to the state, we're $152 million off of what they believe our equalized value is. That's a chunk of change. A little bit. Um, and so obviously that'll, that will change. And it does not necessarily mean that everybody's going to get a tax increase because a raising tide, uh, what is it? A rising tide raises all boats. I believe that's the term. So as the <clears throat> evaluations go up, it's spread equally across the town. Um, the other component that's in there is the net construction for 2023. 20, and I believe we're under the same rules yet, Amy, which is the 2% or new, net new construction. Yes. So it, you can anticipate based on that that we got 1.33% uh, in terms of an increase in our budget or tax base, uh, taxability, excuse me. Interesting that uh, some of the communities, you know, Forestville was uh, 2.76, which really surprised me. Egg Harbor was over 3%. Sister Bay, you'd expect 3%. But we're right, almost, we're just a little behind the county of Door as a total at 1.3 one, one versus 1.6. But it was an interesting, uh, interesting report. So if your constituents ask you about any of that, when it comes to reval or whatever, you could might hang on to that and help them understand it. So, all right. So the next item under an agenda is resolution uh, for the discontinuance of East Martin Road. <coughs> so, bear with me. I will read this, which is resolution two zero two three dash zero two. A resolution approving the discontinuance of East Martin Road in the town of Sebastopol pursuant to Wisconsin State Statute Section 66.1003. Whereas this resolution was introduced before the town board of Sebastopol on June 19, 2023, 
Notice of pendency of application to vacate the below described property was filled with the Register of Deeds for Door County on June 19th. Notice of the hearing was published with a Class 3 notice. A copy of the said notice was served more than 30 days prior to the hearing date in a manner prescribed by law on the owners of all the frontage lots and land abutting upon the apportion of the road to be discontinued or a waiver of notice therefore was received and a public hearing was held before the town board of Sevastopol on June 29th, 2023 at 6 45. So, excuse me, 6 p.m. Whereas no sufficient written objection. That has to be changed to the state. Pardon me? That has to be changed to the state. I was just going to say, I thought the date there is off. Whereas no sufficient written <laughs> objection to said discontinuance and vacation has been filed with the clerk. Now, therefore, in accordance with the authority vested in the town board by section 66.1003, Wisconsin statutes, be it resolved that the, <clears throat> by the town board of the town of Sebastopol that East Martin Road, located in the town of Sebastopol, Door County, Wisconsin, and more fully described below, is herein vacated and discontinued since the public interest requires it. And I won't bother to read the legal description that's in there. The discontinuance of the above described public way will not result in any landlocked property and no owner of property abutting the discontinued public way will be damaged by the discontinuance. Upon discontinuance of East Martin Road as a public road, the land where East Martin Road is located, including the right of way, shall be annexed to the owner of the adjoining lands pursuant to section 66.1005, subsection one of the Wisconsin State Statutes. This resolution to discontinue a public way includes the written consent of the town of Sebastopol to the discontinuance, discontinuance of all easements and incidental rights under Wisconsin Statute 66.1005, Section 2, subparagraph A, as part of these proceedings. The town clerk shall properly post or publish this resolution as required by state statutes, and it was adopted this 21st day of August 2023. And I will just mentioned that the property in question is owned on both sides by Sequist Orchards. So he has known about this from day one. <clears throat> and obviously, therefore, it has no impact except anyone to Mr. Sequist. So, and he uh, readily accepts the property. So, <coughs> with that, we would need motion to pass said resolution and anybody has any questions concerns I'll move to adopt resolution number 2023-2 is that correct this is only our second resolution of the year yeah um, approving the discontinuance of East Martin Road in the town of Sevastopol as described in the resolution we have a motion by Linda a second. second by Jeannie all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Mr. Sequest, if you're listening, the road is yours. <laughs> so, thank you. All right. Financial reports. You have the account balances, and you have the budget versus actual for January through July, and you have the transaction list by date for July as well. And I think Amy has a couple things she'd like to share before yeah. we go. Amy? We have received the August settlement from the county. Um, I have moved all the capital expenditure money into the correct accounts so that um, you will see that reflection in the next month's financial statements. We have started um, the payments for the town's reval, so um, you will see that in the financial statements this month. I've also um, submitted the proposal to Destination Door County for the updates on the restrooms and concession stands, and we have um, received payment of that money. That's I will believe I believe it's. Eight thousand nine hundred. That's eight something, yes. Mm -hmm. So we have received that check in the mail today. Great. Already, so we do have that money. Okay, thank you, Amy. Yeah, um, you're just, welcome. Just one other FYI, and I've worked with Amy a little bit on this, so it's a work in progress. But we're still investigating uh, different sources <clears throat> for placing town money. 
where we can get a little bit of bang for our buck contacting Associated Nicolay and looking at alternatives. So hopefully we'll have that resolved with a recommendation for the next meeting. Okay. Any questions? If not, a motion to approve and put on file would be terrific. I'll make a motion to approve the financial reports. All right, Derek. Motion by Derek, second by? Second. Mark, all right. Any other further questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All right. aye. Opposed, carried, great. All right, approval of vouchers, bills, and claims. I think everybody's had a chance mm -hmm. to sign that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Any questions? If not, a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the vouchers, bills, and claims from July 18th, 2023 through August 21st, 2023. Okay, we have a motion by Mark, a second by? Second. Second by Derek to approve vouchers, bills, and claims. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. You can pay those bills. Awesome. All right. Um, oral committee commission reports. I know that Linda wants to make some comments, so we'll start with her and then move on from there. Okay, I'll start with the Door County Tourism Zone Commission meeting that we had last Thursday, August 17th. Um, the, the zone voted or approved the hiring of an additional full-time person to assist the administrator in the office and adding an additional full-time person means that the current space is not large enough. So <clears throat> I'm pretty certain that the zone owns um, the condo, minute, condo unit in uh, Sister Bay Country Walk. So at least that would be an asset that we could sell. Um, but we did also discuss uh, perhaps moving the office to closer to Sturgeon Bay. Juliana, our administrator, does live here in Sturgeon Bay, so that would be easier for her. And then also soliciting a candidate maybe having the office in Sturgeon Bay would be a little more um, acceptable or uh, um, to, to somebody new coming in, uh, more attractive. Um, so that's pretty much a done deal. Um, she is working up a job description. Um, the village of Ephraim has some questions on destination Door <coughs> County's use of the uh, Door County Community Foundation and the Community Investment Fund so um, Josh is, and a couple of the other commissioners are gonna sit down and talk with the village officials on that. Um, May and June room tax collections were actually lower than uh, last year than expected, but the sales tax was higher. So I found that confusing. Um, there are some uh, delinquent reports and uh, room tax due to the tune of about 32,000 at this point. Mm -hmm. um, there are 148 more short-term rentals in May of 2023 than there were in 2022. Uh, the average daily rate is now $358. Uh, we did also uh, talk about if, if uh, Room, if lodging providers are failing to file their permits and their and paying their room tax, um, is there some way that we can revoke that permit or notify municipalities that okay that these um, lodging providers are delinquent? So that was another topic that might be brought back. Um, Oh, and I didn't see it on our agenda, but on Wednesday, September 13th, right here at the Sebastopol Town Hall, Destination Door County is holding two um, master plan public sessions. Uh, I think one in the morning up north, and uh, then the evening, Wednesday, September 13th, right here, 5.30 p.m. Um, at the Sebastopol Town Hall. So I don't know if Jeannie has anything to add on the Tourism Zone Commission. I do have one question, which is really mm -hmm. not that relevant, but why did the office end up in Sister Bay to begin with? Uh, because Bob Kufrin, if you remember Bob sure. Kufrin, Bob was that's where minister. he was, and it just uh, worked yep. out. Um, Kim, I think, Roberts at the time was up there as well, so uh, it just 
Yeah, that makes sense. Bob yeah. was the administrator for Sister Bay. Right. Okay. But now Josh, you know, <clears throat> being the chairman of right. the commission, and he's in Sturgeon Bay, so they okay. just talked about Sturgeon Bay. Um, like I said, I did <coughs> attend the Wisconsin Towns Association uh, council meeting uh, in Stevens Point this past weekend, and every time I go to these meetings, I'm just amazed at the amount of information um, that is available to us. If you saw this uh, increase in shared revenue in the Peninsula Pulse, yep. you can thank Wisconsin Towns Association, their lobbyists, and um, Assemblyman Tony Kurtz and Senator um, Mary Vlaskowski. They were they spearheaded that. Uh, it's a give and take situation, so we're going to have or be eligible for much more shared revenue. Um, but one of the things that the governor did veto was right now we're receiving $2,748 per mile. We had requested, you know, an annual increase. That got nixed. But like I said, there are so many dollars available in, uh, especially in the local road improvement funds. So whether it's discretionary or your entitlement or your supplemental or whatever, there are so many dollars out there. Some of these are a 50-50 grant. Some of them are a 90-10 grant. So we would only have to kick in 10%. So again, I would encourage are these you know, administered that by, Are these the ones that are still administered by the county? They're still administered <coughs> by the county as of now. But there's two districts that are under a pilot program where unit chairs are going to be monitoring the committee with the highway commissioner. Right now, we are fortunate. Thank you, Thad Ash. He does all the work for us. I will probably be having a meeting here next month. Um, Thad does most of the work for us and even puts the bids out for us. But in the future, um, that's going to fall more to the towns. Do we know if there is an increase in the LRIP for our community or town? Uh, County, do you know if there's any? The local road improvement. Yeah. I don't know what. Any of these funds know. flow down to the county level for the um, next go round? Well, the county definitely benefit. Counties definitely benefit with this. Um, you know, the Act 12, the shared right. revenue, was <clears throat> incorporated into the budget. Um, I didn't really pay a lot of attention to the county numbers. I was more interested in the town. But you know, and when we make these applications for LRIP, whether it's local or supplemental or discretionary. There's like 1,300 applications that get sent in, and there's 15 people rating them. So whatever we can include in there, photos, narratives, safety, traffic count, put it all in there um, to convince that, uh, that judging panel that we merit it. Um, 13, only 13 counties received um, TRID dollars last time. So, and another thing was, our roads are just as important as the state highways and the county roads. If you, if somebody's placing a 911 call, that road better be available to get that ambulance down the road. So we're just as important. Um, and of course, we all know that we're going to be getting one cent out of every five cents. Was it every five cents of sales tax? Oh, you mean the municipalities will get back one <coughs> cent. So. Um, and this was a good point they met, they made. That's actually an economic driver. So the more business you are doing, the more sales tax you are collecting. So it's all about economics. It's, um, you know, so be open to maybe expanding your businesses or whatever we can do in our town. So even though we might have to say, well, we don't want that in, back, in our backyard, but evaluate the whole picture. And, Decide what's best so for the town. Yeah, and the, the most one of the Milwaukee is on the verge. Milwaukee County is on the verge of bankruptcy. Yes. Oh yeah, they don't have enough money to fund their pension. So what they've done is they've added a. Am I exceeding my time limit? No. No. Oh, you're fine. They've added a two tax. cents sales tax. Yes. Yeah. Um, and their, their pension plans now, instead of being private, they're all going to be through the Wisconsin retirement system and hopefully get back on track. They have misspent their dollars. It should have been there. So bad. Yeah, so I found that very interesting. Um, uh, and I think that 
that's about anyway they said it was a win-win this budget was a win-win for um, municipalities well, I sure revenue, what we had before our share of revenue went over one up two or three hundred percent do you remember the number amy or maybe Linda's got it, but no, well, we went large. from it was a huge increase. Yes, we went from oh, thirty-three to seventy, from thirty-three thousand to almost eighty thousand yep. dollars. Yeah, and um, so, like I said, they they said it's two hundred thirty million dollars increase for towns alone in the budget. It's just phenomenal. So, thank you for bearing with me. No problem. Anyone else wishing to? Anything? Oh, from my committee. Um, like, we don't have to. <clears throat> but I, well, I'll give an update on the um, audio. Uh, the gentleman that we, uh, Phil Hendrickson, Hendrickson, um, has stepped away from the project, and he's referred um, a gentleman by the name of Roger Udi, if I'm saying that right, I H D E, from Northern Sound in Green Bay. I have talked with him and we will be meeting um, to discuss uh, where we go from here. And um, Phil did uh, sit down and talk to this gentleman about what we were looking at doing. And so he is requested to meet with us and we will do so um, after the broadband work is um, complete. So. so what was the reason you walked away? Well, he says he's re Tired three times already, so I think he just decided maybe this is another time. He's into the 70s, so That's and he may confusing. not have wanted to take on um, the project on, on as it was transpiring. So we changed some he, of the he, specs on yeah. the on what was going to be put into the office here, and as a result. He had a learning curve and a teaching yeah. issue, and so he really wanted to move on. He preferred somebody <coughs> else take care of it, and so we are mm -hmm. going to move with that. Um, and then, as you as you see on the um, list, that we will be meeting the communications technology committee meeting will be will happen on August twenty fourth fourth at eleven thirty, and it will be closed session because at that time we will. Um, look to make a recommendation. Uh, the recommendation we will be making to the board at, in the September meeting for broadband. For broadband. Yeah. Correct. For broadband. Okay. Switched. Anything else from anyone else? All right. If not, uh, we do have the communications technology committee meeting minutes from June 28th. We need to approve those and put those on file. So a motion would be in order for that. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from June 28th. 2023 for the Communications Technology Committee. All right, motion by Jeannie, second by? Second. Second by Mark. All right. <coughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No one. Motion carried, thank you. All right. Uh, let's see here. Oh, next on our agenda is committee board, re excuse me, county board report from <coughs> District 14 Supervisor Hugh Zettel. You, it's yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'd just like to provide a couple um, brief updates so you can stay on your time budget that you discussed at the beginning of the meeting. Um, uh, an amendment was made to the uh, addressing system manual for the county, which means that the county is now putting out a formal uh, request for a proposal for doing new 911 addressing for 19,000 addresses in the county. Wow. responsible for. Um, that work will probably start uh, uh, early next year um, and the signs are, are going to, the big change is going to be for most of the uh, areas of the county, the signs will be perpendicular to the road so you can see the address on both sides um, and I believe the signs uh, color will be blue if I'm not mistaken. So that work involves, uh, you know, removing the old signs, removing the old posts, installing new posts, making sure they're visible. Um, and uh, I think they're probably going to do some initial pilots, probably starting in the southern part of the county, where they have a, a lot of rural addressing challenges. Um, but um, for residents that have asked questions about should they get their 
signs re re replaced where they are fading, tell them to please wait because that work will start in earnest next year uh, to, to replace all of them uh, in the county. Uh, the uh, Land Use Services uh, Department uh, also uh, updated its department fees. Uh, many of the fees have not been updated since 2009. So um, one of the things that I've you know, kind of stress to them is doing two things. One is making sure they look at it judiciously and also benchmark Door County against other similar like uh, counties, you know, that have a similar sort of mix of rural and uh, tourism. When you think of places like uh, Walworth County that has a large agricultural plus a large uh, tourism, seasonal homeowners, when you think of Lake Geneva area, etc., um, they should look at their fees uh, accordingly. Um, and uh, they've made some su substantial um, improvements in those fees. Uh, the other is uh, when we discussed it in fees, it hasn't been updated, but uh, it was um, uh, looked at and we'll look at it in the future relative to some of the recommendations. Uh, for doing additional fees for continue, uh, for conditional use permits uh, to help fund um, improved enforcement. Uh, and also similar to with uh, new construction, you have to basically place a bond um, and doing something along those lines to create more incentives so that they do the improvements, uh, you know, like uh, vegetative screening, those sorts of things. Uh, and so we'll continue discussions on that, but I think there was some initial receptivity just because of the challenges of uh, that, enf uh, that enforcement um, not being done and the uh, non-compliance by a lot of uh, continued use of permit holders. So that's something that we'll continue to, I'll continue to push as a member of the Resource Planning Committee. Uh, also, we got our first look at a, um, a strategic plan for, uh, uh, for the budget for next year. We'll be talking more about that at tomorrow's meeting. Um, and uh, we'll have a kind of a working session in September at the landmark to basically go through the uh, entire budget. Probably the, the biggest line item on there is uh, the potential for bonding to do the new digital land mobile radio, uh, which is mandated to be done, uh, I believe, around 2026. As part of that, the county has gone through an initial um, process of looking at where they need to add towers in order so that they can get the necessary coverage that they need. Uh, we have some particular challenging areas with the existing um, analog VHS uh, systems, such as you know a lot of basically anywhere along Bayshore Drive where you have to deal with the, with the cliffs and the, and the bluffs in the lower area. Uh, some sections around uh, uh, Whitefish Dunes, Cave Point area, there's some dead spots along that eastern uh, area there by, um, on the on the lakeside as well. There's also some areas if you think of clay banks, you know, again, their lower bluff area also <coughs> some some challenging areas. So they'll be adding towers uh, where that's significant. In my other role as chairperson of the broadband committee, is a lot of those all those towers have to be fed by fiber mm -hmm. in order to you know bring the data there to be transmitted through those towers. So we're going to make sure that they. Uh, share that information with the town so we can minimize digging extra trenches and sharing line and being able to share lines, those sorts of things, so the taxpayers not paying twice. So uh, we'll, there'll be more on that uh, uh, forthcoming. Um, also, uh, relative to other town-related matters, uh, the county has received its permit from the state for, for the Gordon Road improvement. Um, they are in the midst of uh, ordering material uh, for construction, um, uh, most, li most uh, are likely around um, some of the concrete structures for culverts, extensions, etc. Uh, at that intersection. Um, and they are uh, looking to do some of the other approach work along the old highway road sections and planning that. Um, you know, ahead of the September, uh, September Labor Day, um, you know, kind of moratorium from which they can start at the intersection. So they're ordering, ordering material, uh, getting things scheduled. So uh, we'll see that start in earnest, with, you know, over the next month, and hopefully we'll see some visible signs of that uh, to report on at the next town board meeting. Cool. With that, um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Does the um, Gordon Road, will that include 
an acceleration lane heading south then on yes. of Gordon? Yes, that with was... With a direction to go to the route of... Correct. Like 47, the, 42 north, go that way. There will be a lot of signage, but for folks that are going to turn right to head southbound on 4257, yeah, the state required an acceleration lane uh, to be built or, or to be constructed. Yep. With the new signs going, the process, are, are they anticipating having to do any renumbering? In other words, did they plan ahead enough, or is it possible you're going to have your residence number changed? <clears throat> For for addresses on properties. Yeah, I'm just wondering. You know, if you think, look at Glidden or Park Road or whatever. Did they plan enough ahead to allow for a construction of a house with a numbering option? So, do they have to? Are they anticipating having to renumber any areas, yeah. street street numbers, house no. numbers? No. No. They they went in. Um, they went in with a consultant, and the consultant was the same one that actually did the original numbering system that they did back in the 90s when they did that. And so uh, a lot of their challenges were that were reflected in the manual were changes to update to make things consistent for like condominium numbering or numbering of you know multiple properties that shared, for example, the same private road. You know, some of them are stacked or they'll yep. you know have dashes of numbers in between. You know, you know, 3001 to 3010. So they clarified uh, some of those. Uh, they also added some guidelines for uh, campsites, even though they, they don't dictate that. They provided some guidance oh, so that it makes that easier for emergency services. And as part of this manual review, uh, they, uh, the RPC um, uh, committee uh, specifically uh, solicited feedback from uh, sheriff's department. EMS, uh, the uh, uh, fire chief that represents all the fire departments uh, in the county to get their feedback, since obviously they're the key, one of the key, they're the key stakeholders, at least from an emergency services perspective. Cool. Uh, and so we got their concurrence as well on that. Okay. Um, one other one is the RPC. As I think most of you know, I went to the RPC meeting a number of months back and raised the issue of uh, vegetative screening and the fact that. There was a lot of non-compliance. Um, so, <clears throat> is that come up on the agenda, or is it part of a future agenda screening? Because you, you just talked about putting some dollars into land use services for enforcement. Is that one of the areas that you think they're going to address? It'll, it'll be an area. There are some areas within the comprehensive ordinance that um, we've talked to Mariah about revisiting, and vegetative screening is one of them. Okay. All right, if you need moral support, I'd be happy to bring some more pictures because obviously there there continues to be it, dwellings a, that need it's help. It's a challenge, and I think that's where um, some of the suggestion actually was brought up by Madam Clerk over here about using a similar sort of of um, carrot and stick, you will, that you do with construction bonding, you know, right. to basically you know have them put a bond out there, and, and if they're not compliant, you know, they don't get their money back. So I okay. think they'll, you know, that might be the kind of incentive that is needed. So we'll continue to push that, Mr. Chair. Cool. Thank you. Anything else? Otherwise, thank you. Appreciate it. Always does a nice job for us. All right. Um, you have in here Door County Inspections Report for the month. And I have a note here on, uh, I think some of you are aware that uh, Brett Timmy is in the process of retiring. And um, I, I believe uh, that Brett's probably with us till the end of the year. Is that right, Amy? We I'd anticipate. Say, I would anticipate till the end of the year. I would um, January first. I would think he's pretty okay. much done. He's, he's given notice to some of the other towns in the, in the county. Uh, mm -hmm. We have not received notice from him yet, and uh, so we're expecting we'll get through the fall. But it'll probably be on our October agenda on how we want to start the plan to replace him. Um, from looking at a couple of the other town agendas, at least at this point, uh, unless somebody knows somebody different, it's uh, Mr. Inigal and or uh, Brett Gillett. Gillett, thank you. I don't know if there's a third player in that game or not, but uh, anyway, any rate, we'll have to make some decisions with respect to that. Uh, and I'll put that on the October agenda. So, in order to make sure he is fully retiring, 
Because what we've heard in the trades that he's cutting back. And we've heard that too. And the guy that's working with him said that he hasn't heard about the retirement fully yet, that he's cutting back, getting rid of municipalities too. So yeah, and I be sure nice to know right. from Brett. Yeah. Yeah, and, and we'll have to have that conversation because I'd heard basically the same thing that maybe he's going to fall back and work with maybe one or two, just kind of mm -hmm. keep his hand. I don't know what's involved there. Um, but at any rate. Uh, off the correspondence, Jim Mitchie's not here tonight. He's mentioned by the DNR as being given a permit, so that probably makes him very happy. Uh, there's also <laughs> there's also one in here that uh, that is not very happy because they have to move all of their rocks out because they don't have a permit. So uh, and Linda mentioned the Door County Tourism Zone uh, in her piece that there are <clears throat> uh, there are short-term rental owners that have not paid their fees, and two of those are in our town mm -hmm. uh, and have been uh, on their list for quite some time, and I believe they don't make it public until such time as uh, they end up taking the individual through legal, uh, the legal path, uh, pathway. Um, the individual in this case, by the way, was also laid on his short-term rental permit. So in... Amy and I dealt with a lot of those issues that we didn't, you know, work through with you. But uh, I've asked Linda to bring the short-term rental back as a topic to just make a couple of tweaks. Mm -hmm. One of them being, if we're going to have a grace period on a short-term rental, we want it defined and what the, you know, what we'll do with it. And so it's in black and white. And uh, after that, they're under the new rules. So she'll do that at a future date. But just wanted to share that with you. And then, uh, what do I have here? I can't even read it. I'll skip that. So <laughs> then we have the computer aid, uh, twenty-five ninety-eight. Put that towards new computers, then. <laughs> it's not going to get us too far. But okay. Well, we could maybe get <laughs> dust, uh, maybe like a mouse pad. A mouse or mouse, something. Mouse pad. Yeah. <laughs> Shared revenues. Amy already talked to, and then the video component from the state. Mm -hmm. This is where they decided to change the way at Charter's request. So now the state makes up the difference that Charter doesn't. $7,000, roughly right. <clears throat> and then there's the estimate of our population. We grew by 26 people. We're now up to 2,852. And uh, there's 2,448 people that are of voting age in the town. And, and I think, I'm not sure, maybe Linda, you know this, but it seems to me like once we get the 3,000 people in the town, some things can change in our structure. Is 3, that, is it, was it 3,000? 5, 5,000, something five? will change. Yeah. Anyway, um, we're, we're a couple years away. But if I could just go back to on that shared revenue thing, um, they are doing away with personal property tax mm -hmm. as of January 1st. No more personal property reporting, but we're going to receive a payment in lieu of that. So. Oh, well, that's I, very I generous. I don't know what it amounts to, 14000 maybe a year, something like that. Mm -hmm. okay. We'll take it. Bay Lake Bank, uh, Bay Lake Bank, <laughs> Bay Lake Regional Planning Commission, they sent us a notice of our uh, levy <coughs> for them. I didn't, uh, I forgot to do the calculation for the meeting, but I'm assuming we're going to see an increase given the change in our it's equalized very, value. Very slight. Uh, slight. It's very, yeah. Is it? It um, should be a lot given the change from 152 million. <clears throat> it, yes. But I haven't. Is that a definite it's just, maybe? <laughs> it's definite, either it's yes definite. or it's no. <laughs> Bay Lake Regional Plannings, they're only going up slightly, but yes, it will be significant based on our equalized value. Yes. Okay, so the point of that conversation is. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you for that. It's, uh, but going to our conversation of earlier, they will do grant writing, yes. and we are paying them a healthy piece of change. So we really do want to use them for that exactly. purpose. So I don't care what it is, uh, you got something that you're thinking about. Let's yep. engage them in that process. Yep. All right. So recapping is. Jeannie mentioned earlier, the communications technology meeting of August 24th is at 1130. 
it, it is a closed session because they're dealing with the last of the broadband RFPs and the selection of an RFP uh, oh, recommendation. Yes. So you're aware that we're making progress on it, but don't come to the meeting. So that's, <laughs> we could have probably left it off. At any rate, the class tournaments, uh, which are held at our park, are on September 2nd and 3rd. Broadband public hearing, which we originally had planned for this week, I believe the 23rd, yeah. has been moved to September 7th as a result of our having to go back out and rebid the project. So we will see you if you're interested on September 7th. Tell you all about it. And the communications and te technology meeting is uh, next one is on September 13th. That's an open meeting. That's to discuss. Anything that comes out of the public hearing that we need to adjust. And then our next board meeting is Monday, September 18th at 7 p.m. And with that, the only thing left on our agenda is a motion to adjourn. I'll move. You'll move. Oh, Derek's going to move. That's shocking. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Mark. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.